Hey, this is Mike. I'm here at Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Whiteville, North Carolina, and I'm checking out this 2015 Grand Cherokee Limited with the Eco Diesel engine. And uh, I'm impressed. This is the granite color, um, exterior color, and um, it does have and a 20 inch aluminum wheel. And there's a, it's like a polished aluminum with the graphite coating here on the inside here. There's no plastic cladding or anything like that. Has the privacy glass in the back. Basically, they haven't really changed anything uh, too much on the Grand Cherokees in the last few years. Not a huge amount, but um, it is a well-equipped vehicle with a lot of features, and I'm kind of glad they didn't change it too much because um, it's, it's just a comfortable vehicle with just the right amount of features and, and, and capability, and it has really good looks. A lot of people since 2011 have commented on the the new body style. So I've got the key here. It is a proximity key, and it does have remote start. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up. Now it does have to be completely locked. All the doors locked, windows up, hood down, all that good stuff to to use this remote start. But you just double tap it. So now, hopefully, you can hear. We do have a diesel engine sound coming from the vehicle versus the gas engine. The diesel is a little bit louder, and even inside the vehicle, it's a little bit louder. So that's one thing you want to consider uh, if you want to go with the eco diesel. That the it is there is a, a level of noise that's it's not so bad when you're driving on the open road. But, you know, just kind of sitting there in an idle, uh, I did notice a, a, a pretty good difference there as far as the noise level of the engine. All right, so now, now that it's started, um, I can, you know, I can either put the key in my pocket and I don't actually have to take it out. But um, since we're using the, got the key out, I want to show you the, uh, the, the power lift gate, which is right here. I just double tap that. And it opens up the back here. And then that way you can access the back here. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the key in my pocket because I'm not going to eat. You know, I can use the vehicle without the actual key. But here in the back, you can see it has these, uh, these metal things here and here for your cargo to get in the vehicle easier. It has a subwoofer there on the right, power supply grocery bag hangers here which seems a little odd to have them hanging over the subwoofer because it's going to make a little bit of a noise there. But you do have some on this side. You have this pull out piece here that can cover up your cargo space and keep the sun off of it and also people from looking in and seeing stuff in there. A little, little storage pocket there. There is a rechargeable LED flashlight here and uh, it kind of pops out and has a little place to mount and basically you got, you got some not the super bright LEDs but this gives you some kind of some lights there in case you need them and underneath this this lifts up and you've got a full-size spare tire and you have your tools and everything you also have this remove for these removable storage bins Trying to do this one-handed but these come out and you can put stuff in them you can dump them throw them back in there you have two of them back here for some more storage options there's a little funnel right here um, I'll show you what that's for in a few minutes but that's where it's located so now that I've you know accessed the back I'm gonna go ahead and use this button here to, to lower the the gate 
So pushing it will beep a couple times, and then it'll slowly come down. And uh, so you can see here in the back, it has the Eco Diesel badge and the 4x4 badge. It's the limited trim level, which it shows back here. There is a backup camera. You can see the lens there. It has the towing package. And you also have these little round circle things, and that's your uh, parking sensors. You see this one has dual exhaust on the V6 3.0 liter V6 Eco Diesel engine. It's not too loud back here, is it? The exhaust isn't loud, it's the it's the diesel engine noise that has the the noise there. Alright, so now it's still locked. Um, even though I opened the tailgate. Now the key's in my pocket. I'm just gonna put my hand, I don't know if you can see where it's locked. Put my hand here, it unlocks the vehicle. Just it senses the key, it also senses my hand and it'll unlock. To relock it, I just push this button. So unlock lock. Now that it's unlocked, I'm going to show you the back seat. This is the inside of the back door. We've got a bottle holder, speaker. This is the tan interior. It does have some wood grain here. And this is a real wood by the way on this vehicle. Um, this is not some fake plastic stuff. The back seats, very high quality Napa leather and they are they do have perforations here and um, that helps with the you know being comfortable in the, on the, on the seat but also they are heated seats back here you can see back here you have the heated seat controls they're the right and the left you also have a power supply 150 watt uh, it's it's made for charging devices and stuff it's not really going to run a hair dryer or anything like that but uh, it is a 150 watt power supply. You also have two USB chargers back here too. And this is a 60-40 um, a split bench, basically. And you do have an armrest with some cup holders. And the seats do fold down, like so. So that way you can have some more cargo space. This is the anchor for your latch system here, not there. This is it here. And when the seat's up, this is, covers it up. So just make sure when you do a car seat, you hook it there, not here. Just want to show you one more thing before I go in the front. I'm going to open up the fuel cap. And here is where you put your diesel fuel, and this is where you also put your DEF fluid. DEF fluid is required now for diesel engines. Uh, it helps with the exhaust and stuff like that, so um, you have to keep that. It will not run without the DEF, so don't even try to run out. And this is a capless design. Basically, um, you know, you put your fuel in there. And remember that little funnel I was telling you about? Well, if you need to use a gas can, the little funnel, which you take out, it gives you a little reminder sticker here that you need the funnel to put in there to actually put fuel in with the gas can. Um, it's not going to, like a gas can nozzle is not going to fit in there. It's just not going to go in there. So that's what that little funnel is for. So let me close this up. All right. The side mirrors are heated. This had the heated side mirrors, and you can tell by the little symbol right here. So there's the inside of the driver's door. You can see you have a little bit more storage space, bottle holder, there's a speaker, and you can preset your power seats here, two presets, and you can, uh, they, they will correspond to the, a specific key, so you can set it for a specific key. Wood grain trim, just like in the back. And this is your door lock controls, your power window controls. The front two are automatic, one touch automatic. The rear two, you have to hold them. Side mirror controls, once you choose the side, um, like that, the little light will come on and you can adjust it with this little pad right here. We also have a little tweeter speaker here in the, in the door as well. We have the shiny Jeep 
threshold. Now it is a power seat. It also has a lumbar support and you can adjust the lumbar to be in or out. You can also go up and down to kind of get in the right spot to support your back. These are heated and cooled seats here in the front. And they're the uh, you know Napa leather with the perforations there in the center on the back and here at the bottom in the center. Do you have automatic headlights with a dimmer switch here? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hop in. Now, since I used a remote start, I still have to, see it says, remote start active, push start button. So I still have to push this button when I get in. It senses the key, so I can go ahead and push that. It just turns everything on, the engine's still running. So now, I'm going to, I'm gonna reposition this vehicle uh, because I'm getting some, some sun directly in here. So you can kind of listen to the engine as I'm doing it. Now, did you notice the, the engine noise? Just here idling. With all the windows up, I'm going to go ahead and put the front two windows down. And give a little bit of gas, or accelerate the engine a little bit. See, it's not too bad. Um, it just has this little bit of a, you know, diesel noise when you, you know, sitting there at idle. And uh, hopefully, it's a. This will pick up that noise on the camera here. Um, it's not that, you know, blaringly loud. Uh, so I don't want want you to think it's too loud, but it is a little bit louder than the gas engine. So all right, let's go ahead and start here on the steering wheel. And it is a leather wrap steering wheel with stitching on the inside here. And um, has a good thickness, a good comfort. It's, it has a little bit of a give to it, so it's not going to fatigue your hands uh, while driving for long periods of time. It's got a little bit of soft to the touch. And you got a whole bunch of buttons on it. So starting here on the right, you have your cruise control. You just have to make sure you push the this button here. It'll let you know here that it's ready, and then you can set it using either this button or that button. So it's pretty standard um, the way the, the way cruise controls been you know designed for a long time like that, where you cancel, resume, set, and turn on and off that kind of stuff. On the back of the steering wheel on this side, you see this little thing sticking up. This is a paddle shifter. You have one on each side. This is the left and uh, negative and positive there. Um, basically that shifts up and down so you can find you can like shift through the gears manually if you want or you can downshift if you're going down a hill it gives you the control over the gears when you need it just below that button there is let's see if you can see right here it's like a toggle and has a center button uh, this is your your volume control so I can turn the volume up on the radio And I can also push the center button and it'll cycle through uh, AM, FM, satellite radio. Now on the left side of the steering wheel, just below the paddle shifter, I can change to the stations using the toggle part. Or I can push the center button to cycle through the presets on the top there. So that's basically what those buttons do. So you got a lot of features here, safety features to keep your hand on the steering wheel yet have a lot of controls. And on this side, speaking of controls, um, this is your Bluetooth system. You, once you pair a Bluetooth phone with the system, you can answer calls here, make calls here. You can also hang up, stuff like that. 
Also, this does have voice recognition. Um, it has a lot of different options. I'm going to just give you an example here. So, so right now I'm in the radio screen, and I'm going to push voice recognition. I'm going to say help. So you have to wait for the beep before you say anything. Help. You can interrupt this help message and give a command by pressing the voice button on the steering wheel. To listen to the radio, say things like... Help. You can interrupt this help message and give a command by pressing the voice button on the steering wheel. To listen to the radio, say things like tune to 95.7 FM, tune to satellite channel ESPN. To make phone calls, press the phone pickup button and say something like, call John Smith, work. For help on how to use the voice command system, say, voice tutorial. Cancel. Cancel. Okay, so just to, just wanted to give you some ideas on what you can actually use the voice recognition for. It does come in handy. Um, to, you know, it is a very good safety feature. You can control the vehicle once you get used to the to the audio and what different commands you can do and uh, when you have to say them, stuff like that. But I think it's uh, something, if you're not familiar with voice commands, I think it's something to go ahead and familiarize yourself with those. The system will adapt to your voice, so give it a little, if it doesn't recognize your commands at first, you know, give it a little bit more of a chance uh, to, to learn your voice, and it will um, adapt and really help you out with time and, and um, you know, keep your eyes on the road while you're driving. So that's uh, those buttons there. Right above those buttons are the, you see these arrows and OK, those correspond with this menu system here between the gauges. Now, it is a gauge itself too. So right now, you can see, let me see if I can get a little bit better, closer look here. You got your RPMs on that side, diesel fuel temperature there. And then right here in the middle, this is where you, your uh, speedometer is so you can see it has a little indicator of what menu system you're in and what's up and down so just basically I'm gonna push the left arrow and show you that it has a different view um, so this is what it looks like with the like an analog style speedometer pushing the right goes back to the digital style now you see the little bubbles pop up there showing me uh, it shows you that you actually have um, you know two different options there and uh, I'm not sure why the cameras not focusing properly but anyway so now I'm gonna scroll down and if I want to change two kilometers per hour I can do that and then when I scroll down to a different menu system you notice right up here the speedometer is still visible it's just up here at the top and smaller um, if I were to have it in the other speedometer like that and scroll down the information will be in the center so your your speed is always available so I'm going to scroll down more and roll the windows up so we don't have to hear that truck alright so your speed is always available so now I scroll down to vehicle info and you notice it says diesel exhaust fluid now there's different things in vehicle info not just that so this is one thing that I wish they had an actual gauge that's visible all the time because the vehicle, just like fuel, just like diesel fuel, will not run without the diesel exhaust fluid. So when you're scrolling the vehicle, uh, vehicle info, uh, tire pressure is also available, uh, transmission temperature, oil temperature, oil life, and battery voltage. And there at the end, diesel exhaust fluid. So um, it will warn you once it gets low, but it's real nice to really know you know keep an eye on that as you're driving so you can kind of plan ahead so it's kind of buried in the the system there and, and that, that's kind of a I would prefer it not be so um, so anyways I'm getting a little bit hot so I'm gonna while I'm just give me a second okay all right so that's the 
this is your um, your full-time full drive system and that it, it has the select um, it's the quadra drive 2 yeah quadra drive 2 um, quadra track I'm sorry quadra track 2 full drive system so right now it's in automatic mode and I'll show you that in a few minutes um, to where you can it'll automatically sense if you need to uh, engage the four-wheel drive or not it's similar to an all-wheel drive system but a little bit more advanced more um, you know more a stronger type system I guess you could say this is your articulation on your four-wheel drive it tells you if you're going to uh, the front or the back right now we're only going on the back wheels the front is disconnected basically is what it's showing this is your fuel economy your trip uh, it does have two trips trip A and trip B and um, basically it gives you your distance your average miles per gallon and your elapsed time this is what your radio is doing any stored messages will be there uh, you can set up the screen where you have different information on the top left corner or top right and even at the bottom there if you want and it goes back to the speedometer so that's can kind of give you an idea of what that little screen is about there's a lot of information there um, you don't have to go through all that stuff you can you know only access it, access it when you want to all right and you see this interior here the dashboard and let's check out this screen this is the 8.4 Uconnect screen and um, I'll put the air conditioner on a little bit more, getting a little bit warm. It says 56 degrees outside. That's not accurate. There's no way that's accurate. It's pretty warm out there. Um, but anyway, there it's on the climate. Let me go back to radio. And this is your your first icon. Your icons are here across the bottom. And you have AM, FM, satellite radio. You got your presets there at the top. And it shows what's going on there. You can adjust your audio if you want. Um, has speed adjusted volume. You can, you know, uh, has an equalizer. You can balance and fade it and all that stuff. Media. This has a USB drive, uh, auxiliary input. You can play music also off your Bluetooth device once it's paired. And it has an SD card. Now, those connectivity, the place to connect those are down here. There's SD, USB, and auxiliary inputs there on there. So you can play music different ways. Um, CD players are kind of phasing out. So, they're, well, they're kind of been obsolete for about 10 years, but people still use them. But this one is not equipped with one, equipped with one of those. There's your heated seats, ventilated seats, and a heated steering wheel as well here in the uh, the controls you also can go into your settings and adjust all kinds of cool stuff whether you want it to beep when you start it and stuff like that all right so go to the next icon is your climate it is a dual zone climate driver and passenger can be synced if you want to by hitting that sync button and you can adjust your fan speed and um, and all that navigation uh, you can view the map Kind of see where you're at get your bearings or you can put in a specific address and um, you know point of interest different things like that or you can set your home address to it to where you can any be anywhere in the United States hit go home it'll take you home or North America I guess you could say uh, phone once you pair your phone you'll have your your contacts your phone book recent calls and all that good stuff you have some favorites there at the top and um, you can also transfer the call back to your cell phone if you're in the middle of a call and it's kind of getting serious or whatever and you don't want the other passengers in the vehicle to hear your conversation so you just hit transfer it goes back to your cell phone and you can you know listen to it privately apps um, a lot of these are paid apps um, but some of them are already you know kind of prepaid like say this one has satellite radio for a year and it does have traveling too so just want to show you before I go into that or anywhere where it says via mobile that's using your data from your cell phone 
uh, to use these services. So you want to make sure that you keep an eye on your data and not go over your minute your data pack or whatever. But Travelink is one of my favorite apps because you can um, get lots of different information. But like like it says, Travelink. When you're traveling and you're out of town and you need to find the nearest gas station with diesel fuel, I've used this myself. It comes in handy. You hit fuel prices and um, let's go to fuel type make sure it's on diesel now it's going to show me the, the, the gas stations around me that have diesel fuel it'll give me the price how far away they are and you can sort it by distance you can sort it by brand and you can sort it by price and you can figure out where you need to go and let's say you want to go to the closest one so right there you hit this one it tells me the address I have the ability to call them with once my Bluetooth phone is paired. I can call them up and ask them questions, and I can hit go now, and it'll take me to the navigation the screen. Being calculated. Calculate the route and show you exactly how to get there. So there's, um, you know, so it's a really handy feature, especially when you're out of town and you're not familiar with the area and you just need to get to a gas station that has diesel. Um, you know, if you don't have this feature, it's really a little bit of a pain to drive around to different gas stations like oh man they don't have diesel gotta go to the next one and you don't really know where you're at you don't really know where the next one is so um you know this is a really good time saver and uh and all that so you know highly recommend travel link travel link also has uh weather forecasts current future stuff like that and also movie listings um there's not a there's not a cinema that's open anymore around here and um, you also have a weather map a center on map and it kind of it's pretty clear where I'm at but you can see it has like a an estimated you know radar system there so there's lots of other stuff um, in there but just kind of give you the highlights this back button backs you out of whatever you know, like if you go into a menu system like that um, you can hit back and it'll take you to the previous screen it's not gonna it'll just go back to your top level thing on this it's not going to take you back in, into any other app there you can always turn the screen off if you don't want to if you're just distracting you you just put touch the screen and it turns back on here's some redundant buttons um, your volume control tune through the stations those were on the steering wheel but you also can do that here fan control is here as well as on the screen like I showed you temperature control is here as well um, air conditioning your front and rear defrosts are, uh, are here and here's some buttons your parking sensors in the back which I showed you uh, you can turn those off so like say if you know you're getting close to something you don't want to hear the beeping you push that button turns it off eco mode you can turn that on and kind of helps you save some fuel uh, it tells the the computer basically that you want to have different shift points and stuff like that to save gas it's not going to give you your highest performance but it will save you some fuel uh, your trash trash control button is right here you can turn that off if you need to spin wheels um, it's more for like if you get stuck or something like that but normal driving I would leave it on you push the button to turn off is default on all right this opens up and that's where your not only your connectivity places there, but you also have a power supply, 12 volt. Cup holders are here. And you should check out my video, uh, the Grand Cherokee, 2015 Grand Cherokee at night. You can see it has uh, illuminated uh, ambient lighting everywhere and it looks pretty neat. All right, so this one has a speed transmission and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in reverse like that. It doesn't slide, it just kind of bumps into different gears so I'm gonna go right here to the reverse show you what the backup camera looks like and also it shows me the park sense is ready so the backup um, if it's something behind me when I'm backing up it'll beep at me and kind of give me an indicator of which side that it's on so I can keep an eye out on the uh, the backup camera now moving it down I'm going to show you as I'm moving it down see right here where it says neutral I'm gonna go down to drive now if I go down one more time, it's going to go to sport mode. And this will tell the computer that you want to have the highest performance over economy. Now to get out of sport mode, I would just go down again. 
and it switches to drive. I don't go up. So down goes to sport mode, down goes back to drive. Alright, so let me go back in the park. So that's kind of how that works there. This is your four wheel drive system. It is an automatic system. Um, so basically, right now it's on automatic. Now you do have the ability to put it in rock, mud, snow, four wheel drive low, and it also has a downhill descent button. That is for off road use only. The downhill descent button, the other stuff you can use it. Like the automatic, it's in there all the time. You can drive around no problem. This is your armrest. Uh, this has two buttons. Little button reveals this little tiny felt lined pocket. I guess you can put a cell phone or something in there. And then you've got a place to put wires in and out of this little pocket. Big button opens up the big compartment. You get a little light in there and this is felt lined as well. It also has a power supply in there. And if you were to have a CD player in the future, I don't know if they're going to still be available, but the, currently, if you wanted a CD player, it would actually be located in here. There's your glove compartment. It's felt lined as well. Now up here, this is something that they you know, recently put in vehicles. It's a uh, cellular connection, with, even with you don't have your cell phone with you or if your battery is dead or whatever, this vehicle has its own cellular connection. And you can see it has an assist button. You can push that for road outside assistance, which comes with this vehicle up to 100,000 miles, and a 911 button. It'll actually dial 911. If you accidentally push that button, it will give you the opportunity to cancel it down here um, after, you know, I don't know, 10 seconds or something. I hadn't tried it. Auto dim rear view mirror. There's a place to put your sunglasses in here. Tap light, spotlight, floodlight, you know, that kind of thing. Garage door controls are here. And um, you can open up your tailgate with that button there. And so this one's got like a panoramic sunroof. So I'm going to put the camera down here. Hopefully you can see. And I'm going to use these controls to open it up. Open up some more big sunroof there it goes all the way back to the rear passengers and uh, you can open it up like so oh, the sun's getting there you can close it you can also vent it like out the back with the big sunroof take a look at this window sticker I'm going to copy and paste this in the description but um, just to kind of give you a quick look here what it looks like you can use the pause button if you want all right so let's go ahead and check out under the hood Porno liter, Eco Diesel V6, is covered up with plastic so you can't really see a whole lot um, I have a little bit of issue with that but hey whatever some people may like that all right if you have any questions I'll try to my best to answer them if you have anything to add if you uh, maybe something I missed or something I didn't got wrong please leave that in the uh, comment section and um, if you have any experience with this video I mean this this um, vehicle if you have any experience with one of these and you drive one day daily Please leave your opinion on it and any problems you might have had or maybe uh, any things you like or dislike. And that way 
try to help out other people that may be interested in a vehicle like this. Alright, thanks for watching. If you could subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, I'd really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.